Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we've had a wonderful holiday which um, I hope you followed or saw some of the paintings that I did from that in Barbados. Uh, we're back now in Edinburgh and uh, the weather's not quite the same. It's a bit uh, dricht as they call it up here um, and it's going to be that way for the next few days so I'm desperate to go out. I'm desperate to go out and paint but uh, every time I'm just foiled by the weather. So what we're going to do today is, a, is another sort of home-based tutorial to give you a few ideas and pointers about how to paint in watercolour. Uh, a tricky business, but if, if you persist with it, it does get better. This is really focused for beginning art, artists and beginning watercolourists, really. Although, again, you, if, even if you're experienced, you might be able to pick up a few tips from it as well. So what we're going to have a focus on today is, is painting some still life and from life as well. I, I, I feel it's very important to paint from life, to paint an object that exists in front of you, much more than painting from a photograph. I feel that when you paint from a photograph, it, it's not as good an experience and the results aren't as good. And I'll probably do another video on that just to explain the whole process of why I, why I paint from life over, over any other mechanism really. First of all, I'd just like to thank um, everyone who's bought me a coffee. That's, um, it's been fantastic. And uh, I didn't think people would buy me coffees, but I'm, I'm really appreciative of it. So uh, thank you for everyone who's done that. The money is going to be placed in towards making more videos. So especially within the summertime, Scotland's, a, Scotland's not a big country, but it's a really big country to drive in because when, when you go up to the highlands, you've got to go um, not straight, but wiggly everywhere. You've got big mountains in the way. You can't go over the top of them. So we've got to go round them. And it just takes forever to get to these places. So uh, all the money from that's going to go towards making new videos and uh, adventure videos, really. So we're both looking forward to that. But we've just got to get past February, really, which is a, a dull, wet month. And it'd be nice when it starts to warm up uh, in, in Scotland. So first of all, what, what we're going to have a go at today is um, little still life um, pictures, as I mentioned earlier. And it's important to do, we're going to try and do it in the, in the, in the way that is impressionistic. And I, I love the impressionistic approach. Um, if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll see how much I like that way of doing it. Um, it, it just gives a, a fresh feel to it and an, and an immediacy to the painting, which is so attractive, at least I find it really attractive, and not, not trying to really paint with detail. So what we're going to try to do today is paint a number of still lives and to paint them quickly, um, not with detail. So we're going to simplify the process as, as much as possible and to make it a little bit less pressurised. I, I don't want to pressurise you into um, saying to yourself that this is, oh, this is going to be too difficult. It's not going to be difficult. And what I'd like you to do is maybe find something in your own house, something similar, put it in front of you and start painting in, in this easy way, in this sort of, um, if, if you were to look at a subject, you squint at it and, and then you'll see it simply. And that's the way we're going to try and paint today. Right, i have all set up now in, in, in the normal way. Um, this, this is the way I normally paint standing up. Um, so, sometimes I sit down, but that's really just for uh, portraiture. Ten I tend to sit down for portraiture because they can be quite long-winded and you need to stay a bit stiller. Uh, the paper that I'm using today is Bockingford paper. It's a 140 pound knot paper and it's, it's a really nice paper, but it's, it's paper that I use for practice really. Uh, when, when I go out and do my uh, plan air paintings, I, I use um, Fabriano Artistico paper, uh, which is a bit more expensive, but for practice I I use a cheaper paper and I, I think it's important to do that because it, it takes away the preciousness of the paper. If, you, you, if you're using a paper that costs £10 a sheet, you're, you're going to be a little bit nervous to, to use it. But if you're using a cheap paper, it, it just makes you feel a bit better and it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. So this, this lesson that we're going to do, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. It's, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. We're, we're just practicing today and if you do something well, fine, and if you don't, Fine, it doesn't matter. So that's why I tend to use Bockingford for these little, little, little mucking around sort of things really. But it's a good paper. So here's the setup I've got today. I've, I found a few objects around the house and here they are. And I, I've, I've done it so that um, you could find something similar as well. So you, you don't have to be complex objects at all, just things around the house. So the avocado cut in half, everyone's got an avocado somewhere if they want to. Um, so that's a nice thing. It's got nice colour 
and um, the, 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 the pip in the middle is really interesting too. A knife, that's a simple thing. A clothes peg, um, keys, a little plane, a box, and my little bird, which I quite like. I'll just briefly go over the colours that I use. It's, it's pretty much the same colours, well, it is the same colours as the colours I normally use. So it's a raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, cadmium yellow light, raw sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium red, viridian, hooker's green, um, elizirin crimson, cobalt violet, white and black. I probably won't use black. And this again is on my lovely palette, this, this uh, handmade brass palette, which, is, which I've done a review on if you wanted to have a look at that. And it's a Binning Munro, that's the, that's the design of it. And this particular one's done by the Little Brass Box Company. I really recommend it. Right, so here's, here's the avocado that we're gonna do. I've cut, cut it in half and that gives some lovely colors in it. Now, what you have to do is work out a nice angle for it. So look and see the best view. And then that, that's, that's, I would say that that's probably gonna be a nice, a nice view of it there. So we're trying, we're trying to paint it at that angle, but it's worth moving things around and experimenting with the light that's on it to find the right angle. I'm ready to do the drawing of the avocado now. Now one, one thing to keep in mind when, when looking at my, my painting versus the photographs painting is that the camera sees it differently. So it's not, my eyes are going to see a slightly different avocado from the camera. So just bear that in mind. Um, right, we, we, first thing is to start the drawing and I'm using a 2B pencil here. So again, we're not trying to make this um, uh, the greatest masterpiece in the world. We're, we're just having a go at um, tr trying to create something that is pleasant to look at. Right, so I'm going to do a, a simple drawing of it. And uh, just to try and get the sort of basic shape down of the avocado. So you've got the, got the pip in the center. Then you have the side coming in, darkness. So something, something like that, not too, I'm not gonna to pay too much attention. To me, that's good enough. And then you've got a shadow coming here. And that's all I need for the drawing. The drawing for me is just a guideline. It's, it's not the final thing. Uh, I, I work out roughly where things are, but it's the painting which will give its accuracy. I'm looking carefully at the avocado now. It has a wonderful green of, of the flesh and then the, the um, stone is a brown, a sort of warm brown. So first, first of all, what I do is I, I just pop some uh, color down. So I mix a bit of color and place it there. That was burnt sienna. And now I'll grab a bit of burnt umber, just so I've got some blobs of color lying around. And then I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue and pop that there. You see that? Simple things, um, cobalt blue, why not? And a little bit of cerulean blue. So I've got some colors mixed up on my palette, just like that. So you can see those are, the, those are roughly the same colors as the pip, which is probably what I'll do to begin with. So now I'll get, get the colors of the, the flesh of the avocado. So a little bit of viridian, well, maybe not, uh, and certainly yellow. Pop that down there. Yellow's a funny color. I don't always like yellow. It's a very opaque color. So not the most satisfying for me, but I have to have it. There we go. A little bit of yellow ochre. And maybe a bit of hooker's green as well. So there's me sort of with my the colors that I need to work with. Right, okay, so the, the first the first layer is to pretty much do everywhere. Um, I, I, like, I like a general wash of things. So this is the interesting part, where to start with. Now remember, this is for fun. <laughs> this isn't, we don't have to make it perfect with this. We're, this is a practice session. We're trying to learn today and we're not trying to um, have a masterpiece at the end of, this, at the end of this class. We're just trying to put some colors down and see how it works. The mixing of the colors is the same as my previous video on how to mix colors, and I'm going to use exactly the same technique today. Right, I'm gonna start off with the, with the green flesh, and I'm going to 
invent the colours a bit. So a little bit of uh, uh, cerulean blue, um, viridian, and yellow. See that? So you see that all the colours are there still? So I'm going to grab some of that and start painting. See that's a little bit too yellow. Just changing the colours around a bit. Popping them down. It doesn't have to be perfect colour. A lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of artists I've noticed, they want things to be perfect, but they don't have to be perfect. There we go. And yellow here. So there's, there's the first part of the avocado in. Now for the core. Now it might bleed in a bit. So again, co uh, cerulean blue to begin with. And wash the brush. A little bit of brown. There you go. Trying to remember to keep the highlights as well. You could easily forget those. There we go. So that's the beginning part of the avocado. So they're just the basic colors down really. And it's, it is leaking a bit, but that, that's fine. Right, now we're going to come to the... Um, the rind, the skin of the avocado a bit, which is going to be here. Okay, and now we'll lead to the shadow, which I'm going to paint in ultramarine blue. Remember, I like to have the shadows in a cool colour. So that's, and maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson, just to give it a bit of variety. Make it darker. Okay, so that's the beginning of the of the avocado there. Quickly done. No, no real time taken to do that. And what we'll do now is we'll let it dry a bit. Right. So that's the first layer done, and I've let it dry a bit. I've put put the hair dryer under it a little bit just to speed the process up a bit. And now I'm going to work on the, the flesh again, which is going to be um, making the, um, the flesh of the avocado a little bit more, um, more, more really true to life. So, so I've got, I've got uh, a bit of yellow, just trying to get a bit of greeny colours just for the edge of the avocado, which does have a little bit darker. So here we go, around the edge. Okay. Okay, so that's just changed it a little bit. And then round the, round the very edge of it, there's a darkening. So I may, I may be doing this a bit too soon. So the skin is, is round the edge. It's quite an interesting color. So a darkening, maybe a bit too soon to start this. You can see it was a bit too soon, but that's fine. Right, just wait a moment for it to dry. Okay, I might change my brush again just to make it a little bit smaller so the detail's a little bit finer. And so just trying to get the browns and blues together. Okay, so the avocado edge right around the side. And underneath. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to try and attack the pip. So I'm going to use some blues for the shadow, some browns. Nice. And then move over to the sort of browner reds top. OK. 
Okay. That's fine. And then to the skin underneath, which is much darker. So the skin underneath is here. Okay. So there's a sort of beginning of an avocado. Again, we're not, trying to, we're not trying to make it perfect. We're just trying to get the paint down and experiment and see how the colors move on things, which is the fascinating part of watercolor. Watching these colors move is so interesting. We can maybe drop in a little bit of colors up here just to give the greening effect around the side. Okay, so that'll do is the first sort of attempt of a quick painting. I'm not going to do any more to it than that. That's fine. So that's the first attempt at it. It was, um, you know, it, it took two, three minutes to paint that. So really, really quick. So we, we, we'll try another one of the same thing and we'll do it equally quickly. And, and just, just to give you an idea that um, there are different ways to, to paint. You can paint one subject, but you can paint it in numbers of different ways. So there's, there's a basic drawing again, the shadow coming here. Now let's, let's have another go at that. Right, let's try, and, let's try and make the colors a little bit more interesting than they were last time. So again, a few colors on the, on the palette, a few yellows maybe. So we'll work at the we're going to work at a little bit of a green maybe. So again, we'll start with the flesh and let's, let's, let's have a bit of fun with this. So a bit of cerulean blue, working a bit faster. Yellow right in the middle. Trying to, trying to do it a different effect from last time. Maybe a different green, hooker's green I'll try. Put that in. Then we'll have a little, he'll start, start with the, um, the rind, skin of the avocado here. Moving over to the, the stone. So this will be the first underpainting. So you can see that's a, that's a different approach already from the first one. Here we go. So we'll just let that dry for a bit and then we'll come back for the second layer. So there's the first layer done. It's all a bit dried off now. So we're going to attempt the second layer. Again, you can have really quick goes at these things. You don't have to, you don't have to just do one, just have multiple attempts at it. So we've got the, um, the, the pit, the, uh, the stone in the middle. So I always do the shadow, so the light's coming from this way. And then we will move across to a, the, the browner part of it. That's pretty, the way the colors are coming in like that. And then we move to the front. And underneath, we have a bit of redness here. So I leave the highlight at the top as well because it looks so it makes it look like it's um, like it's got a, sh a shine. So there's a much more blue sort of pit, but I think it's quite fun like that. And then we're going to go around to the to mix my colours up again. So a bluey browny colour for the skin. So a bit here. And what you'll see is how different each one is. And that's the fun of watercolor. You don't have to do things the same every time. Okay. And then we have the skin underneath, which is a bluey sort of color. And then we have the shadow again. So trying to make it a little bit of red shadow just to try and make it feel a bit different from the actual skin. So that's pretty much the, that's pretty much, you can see how different they are. And 
So if I add a little bit more green around the side, add a bit of darkness here. So there we have, there we have another avocado, done in a totally different way, much freer way. I prefer that one to the first one. The colours sort of sing a bit more at you. So what I'm going to do now to these pictures, which, which are fine, um, but we're going to try and enhance, it, enhance the pictures just a little bit, just to bring them out a bit. And white paint is quite a nice way of doing that. So, so you see I've got a bit of white paint here. So it, just a few, a few touches of white paint can really bring things out. So maybe a little bit here. And maybe here. So it, you'll be very selective, you're not putting it everywhere, but just one or two spots, I think, helps it. Yellower. And then on the side, there's a few little touches of lighter blue, which we'll try and add a bit of white to. So here there's a reflective The skin isn't really blue, but I think that just helps it a little bit. And then we can add a few touches of darkness to the, the, the back of the pit, the stone. So. Okay, and then maybe a bit of white paint and yellow. So we can maybe put a bit Let's change it again. So we'll try, we'll try a little bit of white to the, to the other avocado now. Experimenting all the time. That's one of the most amazing things about uh, watercolor is that it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful medium for experimentation and trying new things. Right, so we'll, we'll pop a bit of white here. Maybe on the side. And on the top ridge. Coming down just to give it a bit of contrast. Again, we'll, we'll give it a little bit of blue as well for the side. And light, lighter shades. And maybe a little bit of fun on the shadow side of it, just to see how that affects it. So maybe a little bit of something fun here going on. And so these little marks, they can really make big differences to your paintings. So maybe I'll put a little bit of darker blue underneath here. Always experimenting and just having a bit of fun with it and, and just, just Seeing, seeing what effects will happen when you add little bits here and there. I hope you enjoyed that video and it's been fun to paint and what we've decided to do is to split this video into two. We sort of noticed that it was, it was getting longer and longer and longer so we'll, we'll cut it in half and the next half is going to be out this Sunday uh, where I'm going to be painting a, a china box and a knife. So that, hopefully you'll find that interesting too. And it, it's been interesting for me this as well. And it's, it's always a lesson and it's always a good idea to try and simplify things. And the more simple you, you make it, the, the sort of more aesthetically pleasing things become. And painting from life is so important too. If you can paint from life, it just makes everything right. It just looks right. Um, anyway, um, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday and I hope you enjoy the next video as well. And thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.